Hi Adams, happy Wednesday. I'm here with chapter 19 of Beyond the Bright Sea. I helped Osh catch bait for a while and then ate some porridge with him, a little honey on top, before I went out to tend the garden. So consumed with my thoughts that the chore was done and over with before I knew it. I poked my head in the door and said, I'm going to Miss Maggie's before I dig clams. Do you want to come along? I do, he replied, but not until after the police have left. I'll fish for a while. You go on. But here, he said, give them this. He handed me a piece of paper rolled into a tube and tied with a bit of string. What is it? I asked. That man, he said. Don't get it wet. I held it high as I waded through the incoming tide. Then I followed the lane up toward town, turning off at the path to Miss Maggie's. There were two policemen in her kitchen, and one old and short, the other young and tall. Both were clean-shaven. They wore identical uniforms with lots of pockets and buttons and belts. They both carried pistols. Who's this? The tall one asked when I stepped through the open door to find them there. This, she said, is Crow. The reason Mr. Sloan is still alive. Crow, these are officers Kelly, she gestured at the tall one, and reared in. Hello, I said. They nodded to me and turned back to Mr. Sloan, who was sitting at the kitchen table, looking younger and happier after a night's sleep. I stood in the corner and listened as he'd finished telling them what he told us the night before, and Miss Maggie described the holes all over the island, and then I told them how even the floors in the cottages had been pulled up. Crow thinks we're here looking for treasure, Mr. Sloan said. Officer Kelly snorted. I think someone's been reading too, much, too many adventure stories, he said, but he had not seen the crown that had come up in, on an anchor fluke or the giant silver buckle, or my little golden ring in the cinnamon box. Mr. Sloan said, I agree, it sounds far-fetched, but why else would he be digging up an island, and one in the waters where the pirates used to sail? Which drew a thoughtful look from Officer Reardon. Pirate treasure, he said, out on Penikees? Mr. Sloan shrugged. The man kept me prisoner while he spent a lot of time and effort digging up that island. What for otherwise? When the officers asked Mr. Sloan to describe the man who'd so mistreated him, he did pretty well, but I handed Miss Maggie the scroll from Osh, and she, after unrolling it, handed it to them. The spit in image, Mr. Sloan said when he saw the portrait that Osh had sketched. Right down to that look in his eye. Mean he was. Did you make this? Officer Rudin asked me. I laughed at the idea. No, that was Osh. They looked at me sternly. Osh, I said. He's an artist, Miss Maggie said. He, sa he sailed us to Penikees that day and saw the man too. Officer Kelly rolled up the sketch. Officer Reardon closed his little notebook and tucked it in his pocket. We'll do what we can to find him, he said, but he's had a good head start and could be anywhere by now. Mr. Sloan sighed. Far from here, I hope, though I'd like him caught. Will you take me to the mainland with you? They would, they said. Thank you, Miss Crow, Mr. Sloan said as he left, and you, Miss Maggie. And please thank Mr. Osh as well. And off he went, an officer on either side of him, bound for Woods Hole and the other birds and other places. So sad you might be theirs, Miss Maggie said when we told her the little feather on my cheek might mean. We were in her garden planting more corn and beans that would continue to bear after the crops we'd planted in May were done. Their first child was sent away into a lonely life. I suppose it makes sense that they decided to send their second child to something better, maybe. She shook her head. But to see, alone, so small? I felt fierce about this, that they had done me no harm, and, they wa and I wanted to give her just one answer to all three questions. They had no choice. Perhaps they felt they had no other choice, Miss Maggie said, and I loved her for it. But it breaks my heart to think of them tying you into that old skiff and pushing you onto the tide carving a headstone for an empty grave to convince people that their baby had died. If they hadn't, someone might have come looking for me and sent me to the orphanage in New Bedford like Jason. She nodded. Perhaps. She handed me a tray of bean sprouts and pointed to an empty row. Start these over there. While I planted the young beans, I tried to imagine life in that orphanage. I tried to imagine Jason there all alone for years, no one brave enough or kind enough to touch him. I want to find my brother, I said. Miss Maggie looked up from her work. You think you'll be able to find him after all this time? He's probably, she thought about it, nearly 20 years old by now, long since on his own. But maybe still in New Bedford, I said. The orphanage might know where. Why not try to find him? She wiped a wisp of hair on her forehead with the back of her hand. 
I don't know, she said slowly. He may have found his own way. He may be happy with his life the way it is. I shrugged. Why wouldn't he be even happier if he knew about me? She kept her eyes on what she was doing. I don't know, she said again. But if you're set on this, I'll help if you want. And Ash too, I said. Of course. She folded the dirt over a trough of seeds and stood up, dusting her hands. There's no going without him. Okay, so I want to know, would you have rather been sent off in that boat in the ocean like Crow thinks she was? Or would you rather be in that orphanage like Jason was all by himself? Um, I mean, he wasn't by himself. He had people taking care of him, but people were afraid to touch him. So what would you rather? Have been sent away like Crow or have gone to an orphanage like Jason did? Hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Adams.